Well, good afternoon, everyone. Here we are at the animal encounter area at the Creation Museum. Mm -hmm. Have a couple of the zoo staff here, including our senior manager Leanne, mm -hmm. and we have a fun, a fun time planned for you, because one of the things that we did uh, recently, and I'm going to be following along here uh, on my Facebook if I can get this open. Uh, one of the things that we did recently was actually ask you to come up with some animal enrichment ideas for the animals and that we would choose some and use them today. And so Leanne, our senior zoo manager, has gone through all of the ideas that you put there in some of our Facebook Live programs and she has chosen five of them. So. Five kids, we're not going to tell their names just yet. We'll tell the names just before we start each right. one. In fact, you can have a look at this one, and some of you might be able to uh, <laughs> recognize who put this idea here. And so I'm going to let Leanne, in a moment, <laughs> tell us who the first person was that we chose their, in, uh, their animal enrichment idea, mm -hmm. and we're going to see if it works or not. Uh, so Leanne... <laughs> Why don't you take it from here? Yes, a lot of people are online watching now. So okay. why don't you take it from here and tell us what you chose? Okay, so the first um, idea that we chose came from Ellie. And Ellie suggested... Ellie. Yes, Ellie. Ellie. How old was Ellie? Do she you was, remember? I believe she was six years old. Six years old. Ellie um, was six. Okay. Yeah, so we're featuring one of your idea. So she, she su actually suggested using like brush handle or brush heads for the animals to scratch on. So we didn't have any brush heads. So um, we took, I took some of our old um, brushes that were kind of just sitting around collecting dust and we made this really cool scratching post for our goats. So it is spring, so it is shedding season for um, some of our goats. So, and our goats really do enjoy scratching and rubbing on things. You know, maybe I could take that home and put it on a table and use it as a <laughs> scratching place for my back. What do you think? Yeah, it might not. Yeah, there, there's a couple different uh, types of brush on here, so it'd probably be really good to scratch your back with. Um, so this is actually a form of environmental enrichment. So it's just something that we add to the animal's environment for them to kind of rub and scratch on, kind of mimicking what they would do if they were out in a pasture or even out in the wild scratching off um, their winter coat on branches and twigs and things. Okay, so Ali, who's six, Ali, if you're watching, you could let us know. But Leanne chose your idea here yes. as the first animal enrichment yes. uh, idea. So are we going to try it? Yes, yeah, so we're going to try it. Okay. So um, we're Leanne. We're going to see if the goats scratch their backs. No? What are they using? Uh, they're probably going to scratch their heads. Scratch their heads, okay. So Leanne's going to put it in here and then she's going to probably go ahead and brace it with a with a rock or gonna try so the goats don't end up knocking it over and scaring themselves. We'll see how this, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so here we have Eustace. Eustace is gonna check it out. And I added a little bit of a bonus to this. So there is also um, some scent on here. So I actually squeezed some lime juice on these, on the brushes as well. So um, gave them a little bit of a sensory enrichment. So kind of some olfactory. Okay, so, so one goat. One goat is actually smelling the tree and not even looking at the brushes. Yes. Wow. You know, it's funny. That worked. <laughs> earlier, well, earlier, I just, I put it oh, in wait really. A minute. Oh, here we go. Here, here we comes go. Diggory. Oh, we got Eddie. Ah. If anybody's going to scratch, it'll be Eddie. Ah, he is. He's scratch, it was scratching oh. his head. Look, there, it's working. It's working. <laughs> and we didn't even tell him to do that. No, we didn't. Eddie likes to scratch his horns. So any, we put any type of brush type enrichment in here with Eddie, um, he, he will go over and scratch his horns on it. So Ellie hey, We even have someone from Australia watching. Oh, we have a couple great. of people from Australia watching. So They've Ellie, got nothing else to do over there. Yeah. They're all locked in their houses and the police stand in guard out front in case they leave. So Ellie, your enrichment idea was great. Great for our goats. So we have Diggory and Edmund here who are both scratching on it. So Diggory here is two years old, and Edmund is four years old. Well, that, he really likes that. Yes, he loves it. Someone asked, is this their first time doing this? So we've given um, brushes to the goats before. Um, this is the first time I've actually put them on a log like this, where they actually can kind of 
manipulate a couple different texture brushes. Um, sometimes we'll use just soft brushes. Um, and so this is kind of their first time getting it where they've got several different textures of brush to kind of choose from. Oh, he, he's really getting into it. He is. He loves this. Oh, Caspian came over. So Caspian there in the back, he is three years old. Oh, Eddie, get it. Someone said here that I'm busy today. <laughs> I'm busy every day, but today, yeah, because cause I already spoke at the 12 o'clock session. Yes. Did answers news, <laughs> uh, two o'clock, and now doing this yes. and uh, had some meetings I had to uh, be involved in this morning and this afternoon and anyway. Yes. <laughs> busy time. So um, here at the zoo, when we give animals enrichment, we actually rate it on a scale of one to five. Um, so I would say that this is probably this is a one. So we want them to kind of rub their heads on this um, and kind of hopefully they'll start rubbing their shoulders and their backs on this too to get off some of that dead hair. Um, so I would rate this enrichment as a one. So good job, Ellie. As a one, right? So Ellie, who was six, <laughs> suggested that idea. Liza, is it L Y Z A? Liza, hope I pronounced your name right. From Texas, wants to know how many goats we have because we have goats here and at the ark, right? Yes. Uh, so total, let me do the math in my head really quick. And and then Isabella, who's twelve, wants to know why only one of the gates goats has a horn. <laughs> So Eddie here is um, uh, the only one that has horns. So typically because we have um, all these goats can go over in our petting area with kids, we um, make sure our goats do not have horns. Eddie here is just our special goat that actually does have Well, they knocked that horns. over, so we'll let one of the zoo staff come and put that back up for them. This is also and, enriching. Uh, they knocked it over. So now oh, they, they, can rub on, That's part they, of their enrichment. they can rub on it, maybe check out some different brushes. So we'll leave it there for them, and okay. they can check it out and enjoy it a little bit more. LC5 asks if goats go past. They, they can. can. Yeah. <laughs> can. Okay, so number two in Richmond. Who was that? Okay, hold on. I'm going to have to get my, my okay. little cheat sheet Let's out. Let's see who chose this one. Okay, actually, this one, several people chose this one, so I don't have one name just written down for this one, but we had a couple people ask um, to do something with the chickens. Um, somebody suggested uh, we have the chickens play the piano. Play so the piano. We don't have a piano here at the... <laughs> Animal we don't area. we don't have an actual piano out here, so we just have um, a little play mat for babies um, that makes noise. That's so. sort of like a piano. Sort of like a piano. So yep. the idea is when the chickens step on it, um, they will make noise and kind of play and go along. Um, we're still working. We've actually been working with our chickens for a little bit to get them to walk across a keyboard. Um, so they are going to eat some mealworms off the piano. We'll see if it... So they're eating mealworms, but how do you get them on there? <laughs> they will basically eat their way around without having to step on it as much as possible. So they don't want to even... They don't want to play the piano. No, they... Oh, there we go. Somebody hit it. Oh, there one we of go. them did. Yeah, you just heard yep. a chicken play a piano. Yeah. Then we played it again for them. Yes, we played it again for you guys. So Mac here, we have Mac, we have I Colonel, I think when he Lemon, pecked, he Rocky. must have hit it hard. I think, yeah, when he pecked, he hit it hard. So maybe they maybe Rocky. they could peck and play the piano. That's the idea. We're still working on it. Right, boys? So these are some of our Malaysian Sarama chickens. And you successfully got them to eat mealworms. Yes. <laughs> they are usually very successful at eating mealworms. And they played the piano once. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so it sort of worked. It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. So okay. sometimes with enrichment, we have to um, we have to offer it several times, and sometimes we have to kind of make adjustments because sometimes the animals either are a little bit afraid of it or wary of it, or sometimes we just have to make adjustments because we realize it didn't work quite the way we wanted it to. So this is one that's still a work in progress. Well, you know, Easy Zwayne from Living Waters from California is watching. You know, he's Ray Comfort's mm -hmm. son-in-law. And he says, can you teach them to play the tuba, Ken? And I would say this. Oh. They, they, they need <laughs> hot air in. like EZ has. Yes. Uh, if they had enough hot air like he has, with all that he says, they would, they would be able to play the tuba. Yeah, I don't think our little one-pound chickens have enough hot air but to I heard play them the play, tuba. But I heard them yep. play again. So it's yep, they're getting on there. They're getting on there. So. so it's a work in progress. Well, we'll do this again, okay. and we'll continue with them. And we'll see if we can uh, train them to play. play yes. Uh, Silent Night or something? Or? 
That's probably asking a little too much okay. from our chickens. All right. <laughs> they are they're a little bit of a bird brains. So what what was the uh, third one? So our third one, um, let's see, Dawn asked us if Zoe our Zorse could kick us. Did a you say Dawn? Dawn. Or Dawn. Dawn. <laughs> D A W N. Yes. That's Dawn. <laughs> Sorry, my see, Pennsylvania I, it accent. It sounds like Dawn out. to me. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so Dawn. Yes. She asked us if um, Zoe the Zorse could kick a soccer ball into a goal. Well, no, not in the sense that Zoe will actually kick a soccer ball into a goal for us, but um, I used this idea to kind of create a soccer scene since all sports are currently canceled. So in here we have a goal for the Zorse and Zonkey. We have a soccer ball in here, and then we also have one of their favorite tugs because I only had one soccer ball. So. Um, this is what we call novel enrichment. So novel just means new or something different. So this is something different in their environment that they're not used to seeing. So somebody asked, have the chickens played the piano before? Was that different for them? Um, they've played it once or twice before. So okay. you can offer new things. You can offer things a couple times. You just can't offer it. You don't want to offer it the same time every day or certain day a week because then it just becomes part of the animal's routine. So we're going to have Leanne go ahead and let Zoe out first. Okay, and while Zoe's Zoe coming, clean us uh, out well. let me see. Joshua, age 12, said, what's the most unique animal at the Ark? What do you think is the most unique animal? Oh, that's a hard one because we have a lot of very unique animals um, at at the Ark. Um, I would The sloth? I would have to say the sloth is probably on the list. Um, we also have a rhinoceros iguana. Oh, that's right, a rhinoceros iguana. Um, they are probably... Okay, you come... Okay, she's, this. she's sniffing. Just this checking it is, out. This is Zoe. This is Zoe. So Zoe's a Zor. So her mother was a quarter horse and her dad was a Grant Zebra. So and I so gave her some treats. She and actually here as came well. out and sniffed that. Let's see what happens with the up. Uh, here's a soccer ball. Kick it into the goal. <laughs> Zoe says, I don't know about this. I'm going to eat the treats first. I think the Zorse is more interested in eating right now. <laughs> Yes, she is 100% interested in eating. Did check out that other. Yes. Now she hasn't seen, um, we use the tug with them occasionally. Um, she hasn't seen the soccer ball before. Um, and this tarp here is actually um, great for them because it helps us um, desensitize them. And desensitize is a really big word, but it just means that we get them used to different things in their environment. So if, the, if there were ever to be a tarp or something blowing in the wind, they're kind of used to seeing it because um, it makes a lot of noise and kind of flaps around. So sometimes we use things like this that seem a little bit scary to get animals used to new new things that they might be exposed to at some point in the future. Okay, so the goat enrichment you gave is a one out of, yes. what, ten? One out of five. One out of five. One the six. chicken? Uh, we'll give the chickens... Four? I'll give them a three because they were okay. they were they interacted with it, but they didn't really do and everything. A couple we of wanted times it did play. It did play a little by bit. accident. Yes. <laughs> okay, and you'd give this one. Uh, I would give this one. So she's going up to the tarp, which is kind of a big deal for her because she's she thinks it's kind of scary. So I would say this is probably, I would say it's probably a two or a three. A two um, or three. I was hoping. I was hoping she was going to move. she doesn't like the top. Yeah. I was hoping she was going to interact with that soccer ball a little bit more and maybe roll it around a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and let Cletus oh, look, out she's now. She's real close to yeah, the top. Yeah, she is. So as I said, this is really good for her. This is something that... I know that, she's sort of leaning in a bit. Yeah, she's, she's definitely... She's ready to run. You can kind of see how her body language, she's kind of on a little bit of high alert, kind of not quite sure what's going on. So here we have Cletus, our zonkey. So we gave Zoe a little bit of a head oh, look, start. Oh, checked out both of them. Oh, look, he's, oh, oh, there we go. Good job, Cletus. Ah. Well, there you go. Cletus rolled the and soccer there ball. there it is. Away from goal. the goal. Kicked a goal. Look I guess, at that. I guess he was defense. I guess he was playing defense and kicking it away from the goal. Okay. <laughs> Rolling it. He is actually very interested in the soccer ball. This is great. Joshua <laughs> asked, what is my favorite animal? Wow. I mean, I'm Australian. I have to say the kangaroo, right? Or the wallaby. Or boomer the wallaby here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so that's three. Yes. Okay, what was the next one three. you chose? So our next one is, um, let me pull out my little guide so I remember everybody's name. Yeah. Yes. So Noah, Yeah. I believe Noah was 12. Um, he asked us to do one that was wind chimes 
with food in it. Wind chimes so with food. So okay. we'll see if we can get a picture of this wind chimes with food. So we've got some bamboo. Um, we use these bamboo wind chimes with all of our animals. They're fun for them to make noise with. And I tied on some lettuce, some broccoli, and we have a little bit of lemon in there as well. Um, so this is all tied on with food. This is rope that will easily just break away so the animals can pull the food off without eating the rope. So Geneva is going to attempt to put this in with Gomer and uh, Ferdinand and George, our Zebu steers. So we'll see if Gomer gets up for some broccoli. <laughs> for some broccoli and lettuce. He says, yes, please. <laughs> oh, that got him up from his lazy sleeping position. Yes. He actually just lay down. He actually just did his stretches. Yeah, somebody said, we don't have one at the zoo, but I did talk on the platypus and say it was my favorite animal. That's true. The platypus, but we can't have a platypus yes. here. The only zoo in the United States um, that has platypus right now, I believe, is San Diego. Yeah, they're very, uh, very difficult to look they're, after. Even in they're Australia. Very, yeah, they're very difficult to Even in Australia, there's eat. not that many places you can see a live platypus. Yes. So they are, they like the wind chimes with... Oh, Gomer's with, going for the broccoli. I think he's going to eat the whole thing. <laughs> he may eat the whole thing. So no, that was a great idea. There he goes. He pulled off his broccoli. He did. He wanted that broccoli. So he's making all the noises with the, with the see, wind chimes. be a camel and eat your broccoli. Yes. Be like a camel and eat your vegetables. Do you say broccoli or broccoli? Broccoli. I think we say broccoli in Australia. No. Well, we used to anyway. Hmm. Ethan Five wants to know if you could have Boomer try to play the drums. <laughs> well, his name's Boomer, right? Yes. Um, we might have to work on that one. Yeah, we might have to try that one another time. We might somehow. have to do that another time somehow. I'll yeah. have to try to figure that one out. We may have something he can hop on. Okay, Some so what would you drums. give that one? Uh, one out of five um i would probably give this a one so they really they went over and interacted with it right away um they're interacting with it pulling the food off of it making noise with it <laughs> so i would give this probably a one out of five so this is um, a combination so this is some food enrichment and it's also sensory so they're making um, some noise so it's got some auditory um, and then even just some um, tactile from touching the wind chimes. And you can see Ferdinand there kind of rubbing his head on the wind chimes as well. So sometimes we'll even put different scents on the wind chimes for him to rub on and to sniff and to check out as well. Oh, he likes that lettuce. Look, oh, yeah, there he goes. See if he can rip it off. There he goes. Ah, well, there we are. Okay, so you have one more for us? We have one more for you guys. Okay. And this one is... I think it's pretty special because it's one. It's my favorite. It's my favorite animal. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna find out who 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 wanted the enrichment for this animal. So this was Shiloh. Shiloh. Okay. And she specifically requested this animal. She requested okay. this animal by name. Okay. So we are gonna go and give this right, animal. Let's see some what enrichment. it is. Let's see what Shiloh wanted. So Shiloh wanted us to do a puzzle feeder. So a puzzle feeder is just something that basically makes an animal work a little bit for his, for its food. So this is a puzzle feeder we're going to use. And this is actually one that you can use for your dogs at home. So we've got some peanuts in here. We have some peanut butter. We've got some little other little treats in here. So the idea is that the animal is going to have to basically work, um, open these I, up. I didn't have lunch, so if I can get that up, can I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you can figure out how this works, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so Shiloh specifically asked that Boomer the Wallaby get um, so a puzzle feeder that okay, has so we're gonna peanut go to butter. Boomer the Wallaby. Yeah, we're All gonna right. go in here. We'll go in with him. Christy said, "Thank you for showing us how you enrich the animals." Oh, look, Boomer. He must be hungry. You must recognize an Australian. Look at that. <laughs> okay. okay, come here. Come here, Boomer. Boomer, come here. Now this is Boomer's first time getting this type of puzzle feeder, so we'll see. See if he can figure out how to pick up the... See if he can figure out how to pick up the lids. He's looking at me like, uh, but where's my peanuts? 
You can smell them in there. He can smell it. As I said, peanuts and peanut butter are his favorite things in the world. So we'll see if he can figure out how to, how to lift up a lid. Let's see. Come here. Here, look. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to put it back down. Figure out how to get it up. We may have to help him a little bit. This is his, as I said, this is his first time with this, with this particular puzzle feeder. Uh, Skippy, or oh, yeah. oh, there he goes. He figured it out. That is incredible. I used this puzzle feeder. I actually got this puzzle feeder for our first wallaby, Skippy, and he. This was one of his favorite enrichment items. He would sit here and just spin it around until it was all gone. All the cheese its the cheese crackers, and uh, peanut butter or peanuts were gone. Now he forgot how to do it. Now I forgot how to do it. But this is really good. So this is yeah. why this is yeah. why we um, give enrichment items to our animals. It um, gives them opportunities to not only maybe um, have physical activity. So like with our goats, rubbing their heads on um, some brushes, but also kind of mentally figuring out things like this, like how to get food out of out of a feeder like this. So we're not just always putting you know, food, their food down in a bowl in front of them, but we're um, making them work for their food a little bit. Okay, how about, <laughs> how about a lot of, how about a lot of uh, hearts and hands clapping for, for Boomer, who was able to open up one of those and get the food? Yeah, we're gonna, oh, I'm gonna open one for him so he can kind of get a reward so he knows how this works. And I will even leave the peanuts in, it, in their shells too, so he's gotta, he's gotta crack the, the shells open to get the peanut butter, uh, to get the peanuts out. And that's what he's doing right now, yep. actually. He's eating his little peanuts. He said there. Okay, I'm seeing some hearts and <laughs> thumbs up and for, for Boomer. Let's see some more here and some smiles for Boomer. I yes. think he did a great job. He did great. Learning how to <laughs> get that open and now learning how to get peanuts out of their shells. Yes. Yes. So peanuts are one of his favorite things, so we'll use peanuts and peanut butter with him um, for training. Um, so he is harness trained. Um, he is also trained to do paw prints. So you guys, if you watched the 10 o'clock uh, science experiments, you might have seen him a week or so ago. Um, we were working on doing paw prints with him. And I was using a lot of peanut butter that day. <laughs> Well, there we are. Yeah. So that was a good idea for enrichment for Boomer the Wallaby. Yes, that was a great idea for Boomer. And I tried as I was looking through the enrichment ideas, especially when I saw specific animals named, I tried to uh, tried to uh, make sure we did those. So there, we had a lot of great ideas. So I could just pick five. I just picked five out. But thank you for everyone that submitted their ideas for, for enrichment. So Gabriel and Philip, seven and eight, ranked this enrichment as one. What do you think? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And somebody here said we feed our horses out of slow feed hay bags mm -hmm. to keep them occupied longer. Yep, that's what we do here. So all of pretty much all of our hoof stock, um, they have slow feed hay uh, hay bags. So um, if you come and visit us at either the Ark or the Creation Museum, you'll see a lot of our animals eating out that eat hay, eating out of the slow feed hay bags. Boom is making me hungry. <laughs> he might share a peanut with you, maybe. <laughs> He may also get angry if you try to steal his peanuts. I'll oh, better not try to steal his peanuts. <laughs> I didn't have time for lunch today. I don't know, when you get older, like I am, you only have to smell food and you put weight on. I don't think you need to eat it when you get over a certain age. <laughs> That's what I find anyway. So oh. somebody said, thanks for this. What a joy to watch one of God's little creatures. Yes. So question from Silas 13. How much does the average zoologist make? Right now, because everyone's shut down, just about nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to go online and donate to us, we'll help them get yes. something. <laughs> so our staff are all sacrificing right now. Yes. Um, it's a pretty tough time for everybody. Yes, it is. So somebody said, can't wait to visit again. We we're there two years ago. Yeah, we, we just pray that we can open up soon. Uh, right now, there mm -hmm. are governors in some of the states opening up some of the states, but um, Kentucky, I don't know, doesn't look like yeah. anytime soon from what yep. I've seen, uh, which is pretty sad. Makes it tough for us all. T yes. Tough for a lot of people in the whole of northern Kentucky, actually. Yeah, it does. Because a lot of people are suffering. 
Good job, Boomer. Oh, look, he opened up the other one. Look at that. He's got the hang of this. Yeah, he's figured this one out. Yep. I might have to uh, make this a little bit challenging, <laughs> more challenging for him. <laughs> might have to put some hay or something in there on top to hide the hide the goodies that are in there. JT, who's 10 from Texas, was wondering what the kangaroos do when they get angry. Actually, they can box. They, they can. They can actually stand up on their feet and box. Yes. Uh, typically, um, if our kangaroos or wallabies get annoyed, their first, their first reaction is just going to be to hop and move away from you. Um, but if they're if they're aggravated, they will um, kind of box you with their with their back legs. Um, they will also hiss at you. Um, so kangaroos and wallabies don't really vocalize a whole lot, but they can make a hissing noise when they're when they're upset as well. So Ethan, who's age 11, says, "Can you do a puzzle feeder with Goma the camel?" I mean, if you tried to do a puzzle feeder, do you think he's bright enough to get that open? Um, so the puzzle feeders that we've used with Gomer, um, it's basically a five-gallon bucket with some holes drilled in the side. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll put hay in there, we'll put some veggies and goodies in there, and he has to kind of roll it around, or sometimes we'll even hang it, um, so he has to kind of knock it to get the food out. So Gomer can figure out the, can figure out a puzzle feeder. Maybe not like this. He would probably just try to eat this. We'd have to do a big camel-sized version. That would be a very big puzzle feeder. <laughs> so yeah, uh, somebody here said, uh, my kids sing a song about kangaroos and wallabies. And somebody else asked, what are some of the differences between wallabies and kangaroos? Maybe you could answer that before question. we finish here. Yeah, today. absolutely. So the biggest difference between kangaroos and wallabies is their size. So kangaroos and wallabies are in the same family or created kind. They're in the kangaroo or macropod kind. Um, so they are they are um, related. They are descended from the two... You don't have a treat I can give him? Kangaroos, or the kangaroo kind that were on the ark. Um, so the biggest difference is size. Okay. Go. Hey, uh, Boomer. Boomer says, but hey, uh, my human is there. Hey, hey uh, come here. <laughs> so um, the biggest difference is size. Well, so okay, I'm going to feed him a peanut. You want Boomer that? here, he weighs about 30 pounds uh, compared to our red kangaroos at ARC that weigh between 60 and 70 pounds. So size is the biggest difference. Um, also, just the habitat in which they inhabit in Australia, um, kangaroos typically are found more out in the open on the uh, grasslands where wallabies tend to be found in more brushy areas. Um, so that's another difference between them. So and Julie 12 wants to work as an animal trainer at the <laughs> Ark and Creation Museum and I think that's great. That's great. And so uh, Julie you make sure you get your schoolwork yep. done and study and in then a couple maybe of years. you can come here yep. and work with Leanne one yep. day. You never know. So there we are. Well Leanne that was fun. Yeah. We had uh, some of the kids who actually mm -hmm. sent in ideas and you use those and they were all pretty successful, really. Yes, they were. Yeah. So everybody sent in, had great ideas. Thank you so much for sharing them. And we taught Boomer how to open a puzzle. And we taught Boomer how to open there a puzzle. Are. <laughs> so let me ask our videographer, do you, we know what we're doing tomorrow? I forget what we're doing tomorrow. We're doing something. So We're doing goats tomorrow. Oh, we're doing goats at the ark. That's right, goats at the ark tomorrow. i got to yeah. travel down to the ark tomorrow. Yes. We're doing goats at the ark tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> This is all a part of our communicating with all of you, teaching kids, our supporters mm -hmm. online and others who are watching. Uh, while we can't have you coming here, unfortunately, we can go out to you. So uh, that's what we're doing. So with that, uh, we'll say goodbye from the Creation Museum mm -hmm. here this afternoon. Thank you, Leanne. Yeah. And look forward to all the other fun things we've got planned in the future.